Our first load of firewood. Go forward! Go forward a bit! Go forward a bit! Chip. And we are with Contentment Channel. We are a middle-aged couple doing an off-grid homesteading adventure in the Intermountain West. With two dogs. With two dogs. They're new to the they're new to the place. This is Reba. And this is Roscoe. We got them from the pound. Pound puppies. She's falling. And they're almost housebroken. Well, they are pretty much pretty housebroken. Pretty much housebroken. Housebroken. Yeah, they don't go in here. Yeah, they're pretty much outside dogs. We let them in just to show you how they're getting along. They're growing. They're probably twice or three times the size we got them last month. Yep, they were born on April 22nd. They're big things now. It's time to go outside. You guys want to go outside? Hmm? Let's go play, get some water. Yep, let go, Reba. On, let's go. So you may have noticed that our channel opened uh, with a new intro. And that is thanks thanks to Elf Lord's Journeys. Elf Lord's did the artwork on that for our Feather Flower logo. Did an excellent job. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have never heard of Elf Lord's Journeys, please go check out his channel. We'll put a link to the description below. But uh, stand-up guy, great guy, very nice to us, <clears throat> and very much interested in seeing Homestead succeed. So, anyway, let's do it with you, Robert. <clears throat> we finally have and i know we've talked about this before but we finally have a hot water heater all hooked up and going and we have discovered that something is going on with the generator buzz um of course we already had used batteries in it and they're losing um charge more quickly now and so we bought some new batteries to replace those so we can um have better power, I guess. Yeah, Buzz was uh, really an experiment that succeeded. And uh, so it's time for, and that's why we use use batteries. Um, but uh, now it's time for Buzz to get a, a real upgrade. And so, you know, winter's approaching. We want to make sure we have good battery power this winter and reliable battery power. So we're switching out Buzz's batteries uh, to make sure that happens. Um, also, in addition to new batteries for Buzz, uh, we've also invested in some wind turbine energy. And with the winds we get out here, it's just, I mean, we'd be fools not to. Uh, that'll supplement uh, the solar that we get and make sure that those batteries, those new batteries stay topped off all the time. So. Look for more stuff on that coming up. <clears throat> My garden is crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have my little garden area going. I goofed a little bit on that. That'll be in a different video later. But we have some potato plants that are growing. We've had a lot of mostly uh, lettuce and greens like that. And they're like 10 carrots out of the I don't know how many I planted 10 carrots sprouted so hopefully nothing will get in there and get them but um, I've discovered that something is eating the lettuces I thought it was a rabbit which I'm pretty sure it, it, I think it was a rabbit because it had kind of bigger teeth could have been a deer but I never saw any deer tracks out there but I did see jackrabbit tracks <clears throat> and it was happening mostly at night so I put a cover back on it and even with the cover on it, it's not sealed anymore because it broke. So I just kind of tried to keep the front plants protected, but something still got in there and ate off 
uh, quite a bit of the little bib lettuces. So I'm not really sure if it is a deer mouse or a kangaroo rat or what, because I don't think the rabbit would have been able to get into there from the back of the a little garden area. So, but I'm going to go end up pulling up all the rest of those lettuces and things that are in there, except for the ca uh, p potatoes and carrots, and I'm going to plant some other things mm. before it gets to be too late. Yeah, a little time to plant some more. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the main thing that we've been working on the past few weeks is Dinah. And uh, Dinah is a long project. It's been off and on for the past couple of years. Um, the new crated engine that came uh, with this second parts backhoe uh, turned out uh, to be a real challenge. Take 42. some point the created engine was pulled out of its mothball state all of the protective cosmoline and things like that that were on it sealing it up was removed and then just left uh, and so therefore you know humidity uh, things like that got in caused a lot of rust this is a brand new zenith carburetor that sat on that engine and rusted out this, it doesn't look like it, but this is a brand new oil pump that mounts to that engine there. But as you can see, sitting around for 40 years, it's got a little bit of rust on it, so we've got to get that cleaned up. This is the oil pan for the uh, engine, and it is a brand new oil pan. But as you can see, it needs to be cleaned up. And uh, it, was, you know, it was pretty serious rust on the inside of the engine. We tried our best to... Uh, clean up the engine and um, I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank two channels who are sort of my go-to's uh, on these kinds of things. One is the Thomas Schmidt Homestead Project uh, who's very uh, whose advice is Thomas's advice is invaluable uh, regarding things like uh, hydraulics, uh, industri big industrial equipment, uh, you know um, engines, things like that. He's just a, he's very valuable. He's also a, a certified welder. Um, he's given me a lot of good advice that way. And then also uh, Chris with the, uh, with the channel called uh, Homesteading the Hard Way. And uh, Chris is a great guy, knows a lot about uh, agricultural equipment and these continental engines uh, that, you know, I've got in these backhoes. Uh, he also has been an invaluable resource. But the long and the short of it is we've I've spent the past oh two and a half weeks just trying to get that engine to turn enough uh, and break loose that rust and you know things like that that were inside in the hope of making it a usable engine. It's really a shame because it was a brand new created engine uh, that was allowed to rust out. Um, now how bad is it inside? I don't know. I haven't done the compression test yet. But we did finally get the engine to run, turn over. Uh, we're breaking it in now, and we've tested the hydraulics on this second backhoe. Um, we have had, um, you know, quite some adventures with that. And uh, so just a couple more things needed to get that second backhoe running, and I think we'll have two running backhoes. But really, I think Dinah is going to be relegated to a parts machine, and this second backhoe will become Dinah, uh, just because uh, 
she's uh, the second machine is in just that much better shape. So nice to have a couple of running engines, you know, in case we need it, and extra parts uh, for the Dyneho in case we need it. So that's what's going on with us. Hopefully we'll get everything going and we'll soon be able to <clears throat> break ground and get the septic in. So we'll be closer to our um, ability to build, start actually building the real house. Our house. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a comment. We love hearing uh, from you. We love responding and interacting with you guys out there. Don't forget to like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, subscribe and please hit that bell for notifications of other videos coming up. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Bye. Give me a kiss.